It comes down to spending the time to do that strategic planning and figure out what what we are, what we're looking for, what we're okay with. And in part of that planning, also understand that nothing is a fixed point. And that plan is that point for that time in your life. But you need to have some direction to go in because none of us ever exactly know what we want to do, but it's clear that we don't ever want to stop learning and growing. And how we will get there will depend on where we are at different points in our lives. Welcome to Strategic Momentum, the pod course with actionable tips, inspiring stories, and practical advice from progressive leaders on what it takes to break through business and career inertia and understand the business of work. I'm your host, Connie Steele. As states reopen and aspects of life return to pre-pandemic normalcy, many people are trying to answer the question of what's next? The pandemic gave us all time to reflect on our careers and assess what really matters. For some, that meant asking if what we're doing is helping us work towards reaching our full growth potential. This season on Strategic Momentum, we released a series of pod courses in tandem with the launch of Building the Business of You. The book is about understanding what the future of work really means for us as individuals, and most importantly, how to create and execute a plan that establishes our own career mashup so that we can be our whole selves. And the guests we heard from shared their own stories of how they were able to do so by building their own dream careers and fluid businesses, thus gaining valuable perspectives on the future of work in the process. Each episode corresponded with a theme from the book, including fluidity, career success, and the components of the fluid career system, which are spotting the trends, creating your compass, preparing for change, networking your way to your path, and building hard and soft skills. Today, my team and I are revisiting key takeaways from the season and tying together the trends that emerged across the interviews and what they mean for the future of work and our new normal. I'm joined by my marketing manager, Alexis Anthony, and operations manager, Alan Corcoran, who have been integral to shaping the narrative arc of this season. In this recap, we explore our most surprising and inspiring moments from season five of Strategic Momentum, all with the same focus, helping you understand the answer to that question, what's next? We'll start with a deep dive into the pod course that kicked off the season. We started the season off with Tim Galeri. Connie, why did you think his story was a great setup for the season's theme of building the business of you? Tim had a really interesting, actually nonlinear journey to becoming a venture capitalist. And it really just exhibited this growth mindset that we're seeing more commonly among today's workers. It's this ongoing curiosity, willingness, and persistence to just try because sometimes you know, we might need to make ends meet and and have to just do something that we never expected. Or we realize there is uh, an opportunity that we want to capitalize on and, and see that there's a, a way that it could leverage our skills. And really at the end of the day, it's it's ultimately not being afraid of failure. And in fact, almost embracing it because you know you'll learn from it. And All that provides insights on what works, what doesn't, where you may want to go next in your career. Because as we've talked about on the podcast this season and and inevitably in the book, you can't really predict what will happen because uncertainty is the new certainty. So if you're able to be fluid, parallel path, test and learn along the way, you'll be able to find that traction. Alan and Alexis, we also had some... Other episodes too, after Tim's that were more data oriented, and which also set up the context around the book's framework. So I'd love to learn from both of you what stood out most about the state of career and work success survey results, and really what was most surprising to you. Well, what was really interesting to me was people's definitions of career um, and how closely it related to skills they have developed. So using my skills to perform work was one of the top definitions of a career across three age brackets. 
our episodes covered a lot of um, the development side of both hard and soft skills and why they are important in your career journey. But these results show just how important the actual skills that have already been developed are to employees, how they want to use them. And I think that's very interesting um, as employers look at what makes their employees happy. So when workers are thinking of their career in the present tense, using skills comes to mind. But then for career goals, as they look forward, that's when purpose and passion become more important. And that's when developing skills um, gets looked at in terms of that lens. That's a really good point, Alan. And also looking at how people defined what you know a career is and what career success is, it was interesting to see almost there was like a myth that was being broken that a lot of people think nowadays that millennials or younger workers are solely focused on pursuing their passion and kind of doing that at whatever cost. But the results showed that it's not necessarily the case. Pursuing a passion is a huge part of what people want to be fulfilled in their careers, but making money is still a part of it. So it was surprising to see that a lot of people still did respond with some kind of income being still relatively high on the priority list. And I was talking actually to my cousin yesterday and she's in her mid-20s. She actually dropped out of college to become a model. And since then, she's developed a really pretty prosperous career in modeling. Like she's been in magazines, she's been in films now. And when I talked to her yesterday, she told me that she was actually going back to school to go into real estate because even though she's doing well as a model, she was really worried about the longevity of the career and the financial security that it would bring. So she was almost kind of reluctant to tell me like, oh man, I have to go back to school and kind of do something else. But I thought that that was incredible especially given not only what the survey results were showing, but also everything we've learned with building the business you and career mashup. I was like, why not be both and be really good at both? Be a model and be a real estate agent. So you have you have that passion that you're pursuing, but you also have the financial security that you're looking for. And you can just do both. You don't have to kind of feel like you're bucketed into one or the other. And I thought that her story was just kind of Uh, exemplary of what we've seen in the survey results and in kind of the general workforce trends that were fodder for the book. Totally. Um, I think a lot of that just reflects this understanding too, that you now have to hedge against risk because there's no one specific career track that will offer long-term stability in from a financial standpoint, or maybe even just stability in, in fulfilling whatever goal you may have, it, it might not be something that you will be happy in for the rest of your life. So, you know, this whole notion of finding things in combination that hedge against whatever risk you may have is important. Exactly. I think you've said this at some point, but it is building out your portfolio where you want to diversify. And the last thing I'll say on this question too, is the other thing that really stood out in the survey was learning what people identified as inhibitors to their career growth and culture and management structure were big ones. And that's also something that is kind of reflected in the book too, because seeing that people do want more uh, flexibility and obviously fluidity in their careers, companies need to start changing to accommodate the fluidity that's happening in the workforce. And I think that maybe that's what people are seeing now with the culture and the management structure inhibiting their their growth or their career success. It's up to companies to really see what's happening and be able to adapt to what people want. I think a lot of this is now this reverse of people feeling like they need to fit their life into work. And now it's about this desire and expectation to have work and fit into their life, whatever their life may turn out to be. Yeah, absolutely. So Connie, what were your biggest takeaways from the fluidity compilation? Fluidity is obviously a key topic and we've discussed it already today. So it features heavily in both your work and research, but what does it mean for the future of work? The future isn't really about technology and remote work or changing cultural dynamics, which is what a lot of the narrative 
is out there, to me, it's it's really about how we now have to go with the flow more than ever personally and professionally because a lot of us don't want to be boxed in when it comes to the way we identify ourselves and how and when we work. And there's this greater desire and expectation to have freedom and control over what works best for us because now we have the optionality to do so. It just didn't exist 10 years ago. So at the end of the day, fluidity, it's having that ability to, again, have this fluid nature of who you are, what you do, how you do it, and your thinking and approach, where you do it, and even when you do it, and recognizing that it will be in some sort of state at a certain period of time, but it's always going to be continually changing for various reasons, whether it's to align with who you are and what you want to do, or maybe because of these macro dynamics are out of your control, just like the pandemic. Alexis and Alan, I'd love to hear your thoughts too. The other thing with fluidity is that you you still have to kind of be smart and mindful about the shifts that you're making. So especially when it comes to like location fluidity, that was kind of a big thing, the theme that we saw as well with like digital nomads. And it's been huge in the past year with remote work. And everyone is kind of rejoicing in this newfound ability to work from anywhere. And that goes all the way back to Stefan's episode, which mentioned in the fluidity episode, where he made a point of allowing his team to be completely remote so that they could work from wherever they feel was their most authentic self. And I think that's a really important part of this. Like it's great to be able to shift and move and embrace different kinds of opportunities and changes, of course, but you still need to be on a path that is most authentic to you and is still in the direction of the goals that you know you set for yourself. That does kind of come back to the creating your compass component of building the business of you. Yeah. And to add to that, I think the pandemic really has shown the difference between simply remote working and actually productively working from home or working remotely from a business sense more so than a personal sense. Um, managers need to be very clear. They need to adapt to any changes that that are happening in everyday life. And then from an employee level, you need to be very structured still, even if you are being fluid, even if you are working from home, you need to still meet your goals and set those goals to begin with. So I, I think as a team, we were remote before the pandemic and it's something we've definitely dealt with and adapted to as, as the pandemic happened. But we've actually written a couple of our articles with tools and techniques that we've used as well just to help us through that. So that's on the website as well, if anyone wants to read that. We also heard from guests whose stories align with different components of this fluid career system. So I'm curious to learn from both of you, did any particular themes stand out to you guys that cut across all the stories? So what was important across several of the stories was the the need for planning at every stage of the process. So of course, when you're you know creating your compass or creating your career plan, of course that's one hundred percent about planning. But then when you go into you know preparing for change, you're also planning in terms of anticipating what different moves you might be making or what hardships you anticipate happening or not happening based on what you're planning to do. And then once you get into networking and building skills, especially with networking, planning who you want to talk to, being strategic in what connections you want to invest time in building. And same thing with skills, of course, it's planning out which skills you need. So we saw that in a lot of the different stories, like each person in their own ways kind of talked about how they use some foresight to start to build this map of what they wanted to do in each of these stages and then executed against those plans they had set for themselves. So for me, um, the first component was really interesting to see how it was related to basically every guest that we had. So spotting the trends on a macro level, it's looking around at the market, what's happening, what the trends are, 
where work is going. Obviously, no one could quite predict the pandemic and remote work, but that was remote work was certainly a discussion for a lot of tech companies before the pandemic. Um, but it also relates to the micro level and that I found especially good to consider for my, my own career path, just looking at what are my strengths and weaknesses and what do I need to develop further and what is working and what is not. And the most recent episode we had with Kyle Hunter, aka K Sparks, was a great example of that. That I found looking at his career journey and his his life journey, he was always finely tuned to things around him. So much so that when he was in his internship, he was using a lot of material from his personal life, but it just wasn't working with where he was. But he was able to see and identify that that was something he needed to do for his own career to reach his own career goals. So I found that a great example of spotting the trends and realizing where you're at may not be where you need to go. Um, And from there, he was able to create this career traction. He was able to bring purpose and passion into his career. And ultimately, now as a CEO, he's created a career mashup. So that all came from him identifying that the internship he was in, even though it was prestigious and it had many benefits, it just wasn't the right path for him. So I, I thought that was a really good example of, of spotting the trends on a micro level and then applying it to the macro level. For me, I'd say one of the themes that cut across all of the episodes is the it's recognition that soft skills are so important. And if anything, matter even more to some degree in helping to move you forward in whatever it is you want to do in today's world, you really need to connect with people in order to help you move forward in whatever initiative you have. So whether that is networking with others to understand the type of information needed to help you accomplish a goal, whether it is working with people on your team to support them in wherever it is that they want to go, how you connect with them, how you communicate with them, how you read them. It's that personal competence and social competence, personal awareness and social awareness that is really important to be mindful of and develop along the way. Because you can't use tech to solve the problems and challenges that you're going to face in your career and in your life. At the end of the day, you're dealing with people. No matter whether it's in a company you work for or if it's a company you build. So to me, that was really one of the main things that I walked away with. So hard skills are not as difficult to acquire, hone, and learn because there are all these resources out there. But the softer skills are more challenging. So it's really important to focus on that. And it's funny you say that, Connie, because one of the key takeaways that ended up being the title of our last recap for the last season was all about soft skills because that was the trend we'd seen throughout a lot of the pod courses. So it's, absolutely it's a, a trend that we'll definitely see keep growing. So overall, what stories and lessons resonated with you most this season? And what did you find maybe most surprising or even inspiring? For me personally, I was very inspired by Joe English and his nonprofit Hope in a Box. Joe had a really interesting career path. He's been driven by purpose, um, but also this desire to be his true self, both in life and and in his career. He is definitely not the stereotype that you think of in terms of CEO or businessman, at at least traditionally in the past. Um, That's both due to his sexuality and his ethnicity. And also he was the first in his town to go to Yale. The the lesson I gained from him was somebody has to be the first person to do certain things, to reach certain goals and provide inspiration to others to go on and do that also. So to Joe's story, well, why not you? Why can't you be that person? He noticed that there wasn't inclusive literature in schools. And he was able to go and fill that gap in the market. So on both levels, I found that very inspiring. He was able to be himself completely 
help others and also find great business success. I love that, Alan. And it's actually a similar reason why I was really inspired by Brian's episode. He's around my age and seeing the the risks that he's taken in his life so far, comparing it to the risks that I've taken, I was like, I, I haven't done that. Like I'm I'm scared to. But he when he was young and in sports, I think that kind of taught him one of the key lessons that we've seen throughout several of the pod courses over the past you know, several seasons is this, this notion of fail fast, fail often. So he already had this kind of mentality of it's okay to fail. You just get back up and you keep trying. He had an opportunity in front of him when he was graduating college to kind of go into a very steady career that was aligned with what he ultimately wanted to do. But a part of him felt like if he really, really wanted to be absolutely authentic to himself, then he needed to pursue a passion project that he had also been working on. So he took the risk and chose the latter and built out this online platform for people to share their stories. Although he technically started that while he was in college, but after he graduated, he spent some time really investing in building that out. And then from there, he realized he had these other skills that enabled him to start building other businesses. And now the business that he has, BW Missions, is a culmination of all of these things. But even to create that business, he was still taking a lot of risks. Like he said that he was couch surfing for a while. And that's the kind of thing you hear in Silicon Valley with like the the big tech entrepreneurs that they were starting in a garage, but they have this dream of building this massive company and getting rich off of it. Brian had a similar beginning in that he was also kind of starting from ground zero, but his ambition was never, I want to build a big company and get rich. His mission was, I want to be authentic to myself and I want to do something that helps people and makes a difference. That was the risk that he was taking was pursuing that interest and knowing what the potential impact could be for the people around him. And I just thought that that was really, really inspiring. For me, I was absolutely inspired by Catherine Bowman, as well as Kay Sparks too, in that they each had set forth a goal that they defined. Catherine happened to define her goal at eight years old, which is to be the first person to develop a pharmacological treatment for an incurable disease called lymphedema. And the fact that she started pursuing that actively at 13 and just kept on chipping away, chipping away, chipping away. She she was always very clear in her goal, but this whole notion of testing, learning, iterating, optimizing, and letting that information and that data in whatever format it was help guide her was so exemplary of bigger trends that I've been seeing. And what was guiding her along the way was this feeling of love and being able to deliver a positive impact for her mom who had the disease and for anyone else. And with Kyle... His was, you know, pursuing that passion and dream of becoming a a renowned music artist initially. And his approach too was doing a weekly release of new music. It's called Manic Mondays, but putting out there, seeing what happened, identifying what sticks, measuring the potential around it, adjusting that helped him understand how to change and improve, that helped create the awareness of his music and build the reach that he was looking for that then opened up a whole new set of doors. So to me, it is it is this persistence that they both had that ultimately opened up a, just a whole new world of opportunities for them. And they never looked at it as losses or just really opportunities to grow. So Alan Alexis, based on everything that we've heard this season, do you have any new advice for listeners on building the business of you from a millennial standpoint? Well, it's something we've definitely touched on even in this episode. Fluidity can be learned. It's definitely a lesson that I would 
to take away from this season. Just as you can develop new skills, you can also adopt new approaches, new frameworks to how you live your life and also to how you approach your career. A great example of this is Eva from Flossbar and now Medbar. It's something I can relate to quite closely. Um, She grew up with a very traditional linear approach to European family, which is quite similar to my own upbringing. So she went down that path, but she was able to adapt as she went. She spotted the trends and she was able to pivot and now has had this amazing career already at such a young age. So yeah, Eva was very inspiring with that. Even within her floss car business, she's also been fluid with that and during the pandemic offered COVID tests and that became med bar. Even within a business that was already showing fluidity, she was being fluid. It can always be adapted. It can always be changed. It can always be made better. I think that's very inspiring and something that everyone should look to think about as they continue in their careers. For me, I think it's been the the importance of strategic planning in your career and almost taking a step back and thinking about the creating your compass chapter of the book and why Connie chose specifically to call that a compass versus a map or or even necessarily calling it a plan because it's more so just a, the direction. It's almost like a, a vector that your career kind of exists within. And as much as you should try different things, bounce around, pivot, learn new skills... If you have an idea of where you want to be five, 10 years from now, it's really good to ensure that the moves that you're making are still somewhat in the direction of that ultimate goal. And that was something we talked about with Sabrina Woodworth. She is a career coach in addition to being a project manager. And her advice alongside with what's in the book is really just doing your research first, making a plan for where you want to be, setting small goals for yourself and working towards those goals in the short term, but knowing that they're technically a part of this bigger goal in the long term. And my advice then based on everything we've learned is really just making sure each of those moves still is a smart strategic one that ultimately leads you to where you want to go in the long run. So Connie, now all of this being said and done, what additional insights do you have for the audience? And honestly, what have you learned throughout the entire process of you know writing the book, as well as just all of the different ins- stories that you've heard that inspired the book ultimately? It's that many of us have felt boxed in in one way or another throughout our careers. And there's this realization that if we can't be our whole selves, we won't be happy, fulfilled, and able to truly bring forward our true potential at work and at home. Because in the past, we had to conform. Um, We had to almost separate that work life, that work environment, and home life. Because that was the really the structural part of it at the time. But now they're just inevitably blended. And that's all led to many of us taking this nonlinear path and that it's not an isolated event either. There's nothing wrong with it, but but it just reflects a greater trend that a lot of us are just trying to figure out what fits best in our lives because as I said earlier, we want work to fit in our life, not the other way around. So it comes down to spending the time to do that strategic planning and figure out what what we are, what we're looking for, what we're okay with. And in part of that planning, also understand that nothing is a fixed point. And that plan is that point for that time in your life. But you need to have some direction to go in because none of us ever exactly know what we want to do, but it's clear that we don't ever want to stop learning and growing. And how we will get there will depend on where we are at different points in our lives. And when you take a step back and you you realize that, then you're able to look at things a lot more clearly and, and not feel that 
Maybe there's something wrong that you haven't chosen a very specific, sequential, almost easy to tell story on what it is you did and why you did it. So all this in the end is realize you got to look at yourself as a business because you are now a product, or if you want to call it, you're a service on the web. And that means you need to do that necessary strategic planning for yourself so that you can direct where you want to go to align that passion, those interests, your purpose to reach your full growth potential. And just like that, we've reached the end of season five. Thanks so much for being part of this journey. It's been a very unpredictable year, and we hope you've learned valuable lessons that will help you build your career momentum and move you towards creating your dream career mashup. If you have thoughts or feedback on the episodes or want to tell us how you've built the business of you, reach out to us at Strategic Momentum Podcast at gmail.com. Next season on Strategic Momentum, we're going to continue showcasing other amazing career mashup stories, but also highlight progressive companies who exhibit fluid organizations. By aligning the goals and needs of both an organization as well as their employees, everyone can then reach their full growth potential. To get the show notes for today's episode, visit strategicmomentum.co forward slash podcast. On the site, you can also find career and work advice with tips, articles, videos, and other resources available. You can also find our research on the future of work. You can also head over to bizofyou.co where you can buy the book and join the waiting list for the upcoming Building the Business of You course. And in the course, you'll learn how to apply the components of the Fluid Career System to develop and execute your career plan. We'll be delivering live sessions as well as e-courses that offer a series of lessons and hands-on activities so that you'll walk away with a strategic roadmap for researching and setting your goals, preparing mentally and emotionally for change, building your network, and developing the necessary skills to get you there. To learn more, visit bizofyou.co forward slash course. As always, we want to hear from you about the challenges you're facing in your business and your career right now. You can join our community on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook. And you can reach me at acorcoran at flagwheelassociates.com or by searching Alan Corcoran on LinkedIn. And you can reach me at alexis at flywheelassociates.com or on LinkedIn by searching Alexis Anthony. And you can contact me directly at csteel at flywheelassociates.com. That's C-S-T-E-E-L-E at flywheelassociates.com. Or follow me on LinkedIn or social media. Thanks so much for listening to Strategic Momentum and being part of the Strategic Momentum community. We'll see you in the fall.